Welcome to this Factory Design Suite tutorial on planning for factory asset development. My name is Rusty Belcher. In today's presentation, we're going to focus on the process of asset planning. When it comes to developing assets for Factory Design Suite, there's a lot of things that you can do. And often customers make the mistake of diving right into the software when they need an asset. The purpose of this tutorial is to make you stop and think before you jump into the application and plan ahead. You need to address the asset's fit, form, and function and how that asset's going to be utilized at your facility. Some assets never change and some change every time you use them. And the parameters that allow those assets to change are a critical part of the asset development process. It's also important to address the I properties and the metadata that are part of the assets. This valuable information is going to be used in many downstream processes like bills of material, balloons, and title blocks. We'll finish off our tutorial by focusing on the asset development checklist, which is a preset list that you can use to aid you in developing your factory assets. The first thing we want to cover is the process of thinking ahead. I've seen this happen with many Factory Design Suite customers. They need an asset and they immediately fire up Inventor and start modeling. And that's really not what you want to do. You need to think ahead and plan your asset out. I encourage you to use whatever methods are required to record your thoughts prior to generating your model. It might be a simple sketch. It might be something like a flowchart or a mind map. But whatever you do, put your thoughts down in some rational order before you start modeling. One of the first things you want to focus on is the asset's fit, form, and function. When we talk about form, we're really talking about what the asset looks like. What are those defining characteristics that need to be modeled in order to generate the best representation possible? When it comes to fit, we're talking about the specific dimensions that are absolutely necessary in order to size the asset correctly. And when we talk about function, we're talking about supporting all of the downstream processes that your company might use, including your bill of materials, your parts list, and your title block. We're even talking about how the asset's going to be used by the user when they drop it into a factory layout. There are really two types of assets, static assets and dynamic assets. Static assets represent a single unchanging form or shape. Equipment and machines that never change shape can be modeled and published as simple static assets. It's also possible to download models from numerous CAD sources like GrabCAD and use these designs as static assets. Dynamic assets are designed to parametrically represent forms that will consistently change. Equipment that adjusts in length, width, or height each time it's inserted can be published as a dynamic asset. Dynamic assets must be developed within Autodesk Inventor to include the desired parametric functionality. When it comes to parameters, there are a few types. Numeric parameters, text parameters, and true-false parameters. In this presentation, we're going to focus on using numeric parameters to control the size of your asset. There are two main types of numeric parameters. User-defined parameters, where the user can enter any custom value they choose, or a preset multi-value list. This allows you to establish a list of preset sizes for the asset. In this example, I have a simple piece of duct on the screen, and the length value is a custom parameter. The user can enter any value they choose, 5 foot, 7 foot 6 inches, it doesn't matter. Now, the parameters for height and width are preset multi-value lists, and this allows me to control the size of the duct that they choose, and we can make sure that the size they choose is actually in stock in our inventory. If you're going to utilize parameters in your factory assets, then it's important to gather the necessary dimension data for the multi-value lists during the planning stage. Your equipment spec sheets often have the necessary sizes for your assets. If you use them, just make sure that they are dimensionally accurate. Every inventor component is equipped with an extensive set of I properties. The information contained in these properties is utilized in many downstream processes, 
such as bill of materials, parts lists, balloons, or title blocks. For this reason, it's crucial that the required iProperty information be considered during asset development. Some fields in the iProperties, like the description field, contain information derived from the various parameter values used to create the asset. It is possible to map parameter values to iProperty fields. This ensures that the iProperty information reflects the accurate setting for each iteration of the asset. The asset development process can be fairly simple or quite elaborate depending on the assets in question and the desired functionality. There are many options to consider when developing factory assets. It's very common to test a recently published asset and discover that there's critical data or functionality that wasn't included. In order to simplify or standardize the asset development process, many users develop a checklist they use each time they generate a new asset. The checklist serves as a reminder of critical points that must be addressed during the asset development process. This will conclude the tutorial of planning for factory asset development. I hope you get a chance to use the contents of this tutorial the next time you develop a factory asset. If you have questions about the contents of this tutorial, please contact your Imaginate Technologies account manager or support representative.